if God's desire is for all people, we really can't limit the scope of evangelism to like um, what we feel like we can accomplish. And it's easy being a small church and like seeing a handful of people get saved every once in a while. Like, well, I guess that's, I mean, what more could we expect of ourselves? But I just want to stand here to say like, we are a part of a church that is grand and glorious and advancing aggressively in the earth. Don't count yourself out of that because you feel like, well, I got to go to work tomorrow. You know, it's like, how much of this can I, how much of this can I possibly be a part of? I think we are a part of something that's much larger. And I referenced earlier the Pauline example, and I just want to read from Romans 15 to kind of give a little bit of uh, context to that. Romans 15, starting in verse 18, says this, For I will not presume to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, resulting in the obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed. This is Paul kind of qualifying what he's about to say. He said, In the power of signs and wonders, in the power of the Spirit, so that from Jerusalem, round about as far as Elycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Honest, before... I had this read to me, I didn't think you could say things like this. I had read it before and just completely, I spaced out very easily. I just glazed over and then somebody read it to me. It's like what he's saying is everywhere that he's gone, he feels confident before God and before the church of all history that he completely accomplished the work that he was sent to do. I mean, the confidence on this man. Like that is absurd. I can't even say that about most meals that I've eaten that I fully accomplished it. Like, that's, that's crazy. But what he's saying is, everywhere I've gone, I've obeyed the Holy Spirit, I've been true to the gospel, and I've preached it shamelessly everywhere that I've been from this point to this point. Amazing. Incredible. And the next thing he says is where it gets really sticky. Verse 20. And thus, because of all this, I aspire to preach the gospel not where Christ was already named so that I would not build on another man's foundation. And he says, I'm going to go to Spain because nobody's a Christian there and they need to hear about Jesus. And it's like, I mean, the the levels of this are are breathtaking. One, to say like, I'm going to fully accomplish where I'm at. And then to say, but I won't go somewhere where there's already work being done because there are lots of people that are already being neglected. This is early days of the church. This is early days of the movement. And he's saying like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just keep building up the same wall that's already been built. So toward the conclusion of this magnum opus, epic letter to the church in Rome, he makes his intention very clear. He makes it clear that he's gonna plunge into the wild not for his own reputation, though you can kind of interpret it that way, like he sounds like, I don't want anybody else's foundation, I want my foundation. What he's saying is to bring the good news about Jesus to people who are especially neglected. 